Hi, I'm George Salios from Fine Scale Miniatures, and you are watching What's Neat This Week with Ken Patterson. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. Additional support is provided by Wathers Trains, everything you need to build a great model railroad. Check out their website at wathers.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. Further support is provided by American Limited Models, the relentless pursuit of accuracy. Check out their website at AmericanLimitedModels.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for December 2021. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a great show in that we start out with a great interview with Ed Dickens, the head of the Union Pacific Steam Program. The Big Boy Locomotive was here this summer, and it was a beautiful day, and we've got a great interview that we're running this month in the show. Also, we've got some fantastic drone footage, what I call the Winter Odyssey from Dan Scheidel, our drone pilot. Absolutely beautiful scenery. In fact, it looks just like models when you view it. Also this month, Radisson McGuire stops by and he shares with us how he paints military vehicles for loading on a freight car load, as in my train that I've shown in the past. He's a great modeler of all those types of vehicles. We saw a segment from him last month and it's great to have him on the show again. Also, Doug Blaine from Bachman Trains, my friend over there from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, gives us a great interview with different gift ideas for Christmas and some of the new products that Bachman is in fact coming out with. Another great Christmas idea is the Walther's Build-A-World. This is a subscription-based series of dioramas, whereas it's designed to bring the youth into the hobby and or the experienced modeler that may be downsizing and not have a full layout, but they still want to build models on the kitchen table or their desk. This series of structures and dioramas comes complete with all the tools necessary to build four different types of dioramas. So check that out also at walthers.com. Um, it's a great idea for Christmas. Now, Walther's mainline series freight cars, they've got 60-foot three-bay hoppers and a lot of other freight cars on Walther's.com that would also make great Christmas gifts, or you can pick them up at my favorite hobby shop, Lombard Ho Hobbies, up in Lombard, Illinois. Hats off to you guys, and thank you so much for helping us promote the best hobby in the world. Another idea that I've got for a Christmas gift, I ran into this soldering iron made by Milwaukee. This is the perfect gift to give that model railroader in your life that has every single tool because I promise you they don't have this. This is a battery operated rechargeable soldering iron. It runs with the M12 series of batteries and it's kind of amazing in that you can just turn it on, use it when you need it, it's always charged and then it's ready for the go. Easy to travel, easy to take with you to the club. Perfect gift again for Christmas. Also I'd like to say be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video show that we produce every Saturday, keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby, special products, great guests, and also our regular podcast crew. It's a wonderful show that we love to produce every Saturday, keeping you informed of what's new in this, the best hobby in the world. And with that, let's continue on with the rest of this December 2021 What's Neat.
For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Rad McGuire. Now, last month, he shared with us an array of amazing military vehicles all tricked out, just like we see Mike Buddy do auto racks. But today, he's going to be modeling something called a 978 Oshkosh. And that is, what is that? That's a tanker truck. Is that right? Yeah, it is the main tanker truck for the U.S. Army. Okay. And you've started to disassemble one here. Let's get a shot of that and tell us why you took the whole thing apart, because that looks scary to me. <laughs> well, Ken, you know, back in 2019, I was here for the military train and you showed off your military train. And the entire time I've seen you've done nothing with your military train. Correct. <laughs> so I drove all the way from Alabama to finally do something with your military train. Okay. I'm going to paint one of these vehicles today. Wow. All right. So let's see how this turns out. This will be exciting step by step as we go through the process. Okay, Rad, now we've come outside and you're going to can spray paint this Oshkosh and you've got a very interesting tool holding it. What is that? That's just a helping hands device. You can get these at any Harbor Freight and pretty much a lot of the hobby shops sell these too. Uh, it's a great cheap little device, holds them in place very easily and this has multi-purpose from vehicles to trains. But today, like you said, rattle can, a lot of people are very uneasy about spray paint. Tamiya makes amazing colors. This is TS61 NATO green. Now with the military colors is to each his own, but Tamiya to me makes one of the most accurate color schemes on the market. Okay, very cool, man. Show us what you do. Okay, Rad, I see you've got an amazing book there and you're about to disassemble this model. Tell me about this book. This is a US, military, US Army paint by numbers book, essentially. It is an official military document uh, to show you what the front page looks like. Uh, this is it, the color markings and camouflage painting of US military vehicles, construction equipment and material handling equipment. This is uh, straight from the Department of the US Army, a friend of mine, from Aniston Army Depot gave me this book because it is a semi outdated book. There are the older vehicles from the 80s in this book. Okay. But for the vehicle that we're doing today, the uh, 978 Oshkosh, we're gonna be painting this guy into woodland. And I will show you how to disassemble, how to do your basic detailing, and then how to paint and uh, essentially get it to where it is a prototype vehicle for your train, military railhead, or just going through your town. Okay, Rad, we saw you outside painting a model, but we're do using two models to create this demonstration. And you told me it's very important to understand how to disassemble the model, right? Right, and the reason being is because you do not want to paint the tires and you do not want to paint on the windows. And there's also other detail parts we have to, to install. So the tires come off pretty, pretty easy. You just gotta kind of twist them. And then if I can do this, there we go. It comes right off. You're good to go. Now with the cab, which is the most important thing, we, it's a large window. You don't want paint on your windows. So this protective piece right here holds it in place and the cab will slide right off. And then you just push and that's good. We're going to leave the cab off for paint and final reassembly because it'll all go back together once it's fully detailed, like the finished model we have here. Now, another thing that you will notice with these older Roco Herpa models or just mini tanks in general, is you have different detail sprues. We're gonna need our mirrors, our tie down points for when we do actually do tie downs, and our grab, our grab irons. That's just for the cab. For the rear, you're gonna need your safety railing and your steps and ladder for the rear tank. So we'll get to assembling on this. Rad, I see you've already started painting black. Tell me what you're doing there. Okay, so when you look at the, the NATO scheme on this book, you see one, two, and three. Number one is your NATO black, number two is your NATO green, and number three is brown. We're going to handle brown last. But the best thing to do is you see all these hard lines and angles, and the best thing to do is just kind of do it the best of your ability. Because even when you look at these trucks in person, they differ from vehicle to vehicle just ever so slightly. 
It's basically, this, the pattern itself is there, but the spray markings might be different. So we want to try and get it as close to the NATO paint scheme as humanly possible. So now I'm painting the NATO brown on the fuel itself. And the thing that everyone needs to realize here is you can airbrush this, yes. But just like the real military, they just spray paint this stuff on there. It can be hand done. It's a lot easier than you think. If you don't get it exactly to the prototype picture, that's okay. If it's in the general area and keeps the general shape, that's what you want. Because when you look at the actual photos, they're all different in their own little ways, which we will see here. I mean, it's, we're gonna take this end right here and we can tell number three, which goes here, would be going right here. So we're gonna go in, take a little bit of our our paint here, damp any excess water we have on it. And we're gonna come in and just follow the line. And you're gonna to wanna to keep, there are no hard edges or hard lines, so you're not gonna have any jagged lines. It's all supposed to, to kind of flow with, into one another. And that, it's a little brown patch, just like we have on the prototype. You're painting. If I didn't say it before, I am using Tamiya water-based paints. These are acrylic paints offered by Tamiya, and they offer the full gambit of NATO black, NATO brown, and they even do foreign countries and specialty paints. For example, USAF brown and USAF black and green, they do to use. Today, for the last part, we're gonna decal here. This is a brand new decal sheet from Arsenal M Mini Tanks, the people who bought Roco, and they make a nifty fuel tanker set for any color fuel truck you could possibly imagine. We've already installed the uh, ID unit numbers and the weird chevron on the doors, and we've already done the sides, but they also have them on the rear end here, so we're just going to Kind of take our finger and slide this decal off like that. Take our Walther Solva set off here. And just give a quick dab. These decals are super thin, but they're super easy to work with at the same time. That went on very straight, so we are good for that. And take a Q-tip, kind of dab off the excess and this is decaling everyone has their own little way of doing their decals so I'm pretty sure everyone has set in their ways here now we're gonna take our 1993 the fuel warning placards which are here and these decals only take a few seconds to, to work with uh, to to where you can actually get them off of the the, the paper here. It's there's some of the easiest decals to work with. Leave it to the to uh, the Germans to come up with just amazing products like this. Because back in the day, we would only we would have to go out and have to custom order these ourselves and have I don't know, 30 or 40 sheets or even plus. Take a little bit there. And you're good. That's how we decal the, the uh, 978 Hemet. All right, this is our the last paint process. This is PS55 Flat Clear from Tamiya. It's a brand new product that just started arriving at hobby shops here, uh, stateside really. So when you take your Flat Clear, you're gonna, of course, shake it and just lightly Hit every single angle you can. What this is gonna do is this is gonna make everything look uniform. This is gonna basically blend all the paints and all of your decals all into one. And the glory, the great thing about this is you do not have to clear coat these like you used to with some decals because this is almost a clear coat at the end of the day. But it's so hot out here because it's beautiful St. Louis weather, it's pretty much all drying on contact. There you go. All right, so now that we have completed the paint and the decaling and the clear coating, it's time for reassembly of our Hemet fuel tanker. This is a pretty easy step here. It's actually one of my favorite steps is to watch the model all come together. We're gonna reinsert the windows. 
and the so we don't scrape the paint off our lights we're gonna just barely pull if I can get this to actually cooperate because they don't always like to go on the way you had it and that snaps back into place very evenly the spare tire had a different mounting ring so we're gonna install the spare tire back on the prong and just one by one reinsert the wheels and then just like that you've got your very own military fuel truck off ready to hit the railhead and go off to its next duty assignment somewhere in the country. Ray Addison, you made this look really simple. Um, I mean, we just spent a few hours watching you paint the camouflage, paint the model green, add decals, and we managed to work dinner in there. You do make it look easy. It's a lot easier than people realize. And all you gotta do is have the patience and you can get this thing done in one evening. Man, thank you so much for sharing this with the viewers of What's Neat. And that is this segment for What's Neat. For this segment of What's Neat, we're down here with 4014 and I've got Ed Dickens with me, the main engineer for the steam program for the Union Pacific Railroad. Ed, tell me about your passion for the hobby because I know that you are also a model railroader. Well, it's been a long time since I've, I've done modeling, but when I was uh, in grade school, I, I fell in love with the Rio Grande. And back, and this would be in the 1970s, we didn't have the SD40 T-2 <laughs> off the shelf, beautiful models. And I've been out of it, so I don't even know what those are called, the Genesis or whatever that, that top of the line is. Right, oh. Atherin's gonna be proud to hear that. Oh yeah, we, we would have died for something like that. So we had to kit bash them. Yes. I remember the, the, the magazines at the time, Model Railroader, that was like, that was like the best thing that could happen to us. That's where we spent our money. My paper route money went toward modeling, <laughs> you know, the ready to run, horn hook coupler, even the Tyco stuff. I just loved all, all that. The, the stuff that we have today that I see, and oftentimes we have requests for model companies to come evaluate the equipment and measure it and, and so they can duplicate it. I have a real appreciation for that and, and I, I wanna help them so they can they can uh, make the locomotives as accurate. If you think about, they're willing to invest the time and, and effort in the tooling, and that's got to be expensive. We wanna help them come up with the best model that they can. We're always making little subtle changes to the locomotive, changes that we know model railroaders would be interested in. Right. Because there there's kind of a rivet counting perfectionism with modeling, and we appreciate that. So. There are sometimes we'll make a change and we'll want to keep it a little bit secret and, and wonder how long before somebody notices. Right. Well, they notice right away. So that's just the attention to detail you guys have. There's seven manufacturers currently making the big boy locomotive and that's just in HO scale. That doesn't count the ones in large scale, Trains USA and MTH did it in O scale. So many different scales. And the one thing that everybody has been doing is writing the chalked words big boy on the front of the locomotive. And we both know where that phrase came from, the big boy. Sure. Yeah, that's that's a tribute to all of the people that worked during the industrial age, not just the individual who wrote it and the workers at Alco, but all locomotive manufacturers, all the designers, the draft people, everybody that did the work on the railroad, not just building the railroads, but maintaining the locomotives, operating them in every way. So that's that's a tribute. We still put it up there in chalk. Yes. And the rain will wash it off. And then we, we don't have a schedule on when we're going to put it back up. It's just kind of a fun way to pay tribute. Absolutely. Photographers like to keep track of it. 
the modelers will write it a little bit differently here and there, but it's become so much of the story of the big boy. Uh, it's something that people want to know, when are you going to write it up there? Right. Or so it's 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 a it's something that that they enjoy photographing and and kind of keeping track of that little detail. Convey with me the feeling that the status of being the engineer of this locomotive is now. Will you remember Steve Lee from eighty four forty four or at one time eight forty four and thirty nine eighty five the Challenger locomotive? He also had that established position of being very famous. I knew his name and so many other people do. And now you followed those footsteps and you've been with Union Pacific on the STEAM program, you said for 17 years. Tell me how it feels to be of that stature of. Well, I think I think it's careful not to get swept into that because it's not about, even though I really in a heartfelt, I sincerely appreciate that name recognition but there's so many people that go into making this locomotive work. Yes. You know, I think it's natural to look up into a locomotive like this and you've got that big window and it's easy to associate the individual sitting in the window. But I think there's a danger with that too, in that uh, we fail to recognize all of the other people. Yes. And, and there are so many, every member of the crew here who works tirelessly in performing all the important work. There's nobody more important or less important than, than everyone in this crew. A small crew, we have a very small crew compared to what the Steve Lee era enjoyed. Right. So we have to be very judicious about what we work on, how we work on it, make sure that our quality is absolutely the best in everything that we do, all of the details, we're always dotting the I's and crossing the T's. But when you get to know the members of this crew, you'll see such a talented workforce. Right. And so many diverse talents that are necessary. You've got to wear different hats and you've got to be willing to perform all the different functions to make this steam locomotive work. Right. So I enjoy that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to sign autographs, but I always want, I'm always <laughs> grabbing everybody else on the crew with me and say, hey, get over here, get over here, get over here. And some of them are uncomfortable with the uh, the accolades and the spotlight. That's normal, I think. Uh, but it, it's also part of the job that, that people want, go, people yeah. want to be able to tie a human side to this. And and in this instance, uh, for the time being, uh, that falls to us. Yes. Is there a word that can describe when you've got this magnificent machine open on the main line, you're doing full throttle, you're doing probably 80 miles an hour plus. Is there a word that can describe what you feel like at that moment? Well, uh, we, we don't do 80. We, we, don't, we don't do much over 60 generally. Uh, but to your point, it's, it's exhilarating, it's humbling. There's a lot of emotions, that, a lot of memories and a lot of things that we all we all have during operations, uh, depending on whether it's morning or evening and the way the whistle sounds, the way that there's an ambiance when you go through a crowd of people, there's an aura that you can detect and you can feel, and you can feel that level of enthusiasm that they're sharing for the locomotive. And so from that standpoint, you're, you're putting on a demonstration, you're putting on a show. So we sound the whistle very nice uh, repeatedly, uh, we, we, we sound it in a certain cadence that yes. is, is evokes more emotion from people. So it's all just a really big connection, you know, so to be able to do that, you know, we've all done it a long time. So there's a lot of experience here. And so when we operate the locomotive, we're very disciplined about every aspect of it. That pressure is maintained always at 300 pounds. We're very diligent about our fuel consumption, our water chemistry, every aspect of that there's this this reverence about what we're doing right because we want to carry on the traditions you know there's been uh we've had to fix a lot of equipment and we've got equipment that doesn't run anymore and so we don't want to get to that point to where we're we're repeating some of those conditions that resulted in this equipment not running so we're just very careful about that but back to your point about what it's like yes it's it's uh it's a true it's a true honor and a privilege. It's a blessing to be a part of it. We don't ever lose sight of that because um, this is the moment in time in which we're given this responsibility and we want to do it right. We want people to go away with this experience and very positive experience. Uh, we have materials that we give to people 
uh, our interactions with people are very important and very yes. very personal yes and that we want people to feel like that that they've been the, that we're paying attention to them right. we don't want to miss people you know that's the things that we um, that I, I enjoy I know the, the the rest of the crew really enjoys that too you know they're able to interact with people and sometimes you're able to see those people again along the way that's always <laughs> special but it's the young children that have have the passion for the steam locomotive that you know that you're impacting that moment in time for them. Yes, forever a memory, and that's what leads into modeling. I always say it all the time, that this is the best hobby in the world, model railroading and rail fanning in general. And Ed, it's because of people just like you. Well, thank you very much. It's a, it's a privilege for us, and having this locomotive, this iconic machine, and being the people that are, are the ones assigned to maintain it, to, to actually reacquire it, and to rebuild it is something from the beginning, you know, we set ourselves on a mission that we want to make sure and do everything as careful as we can. Right. When we maintain this locomotive, we don't have the luxury of having a roundhouse every night and having everything that the railroad had back when they kept these locomotives in operation. Right. So that means we've got to really be careful and diligent about every everything, all the details, the grease, the oil, uh, how we operate the locomotive, the speeds we operate it the track in which we operate it over, how we operate it. I mean, every piece of this is a very well orchestrated, carefully choreographed plan that we set in motion. The majority of those planning details are my responsibility. So that brings everything together full circle because knowing the logistics of everything allows me to fit this big giant piece of the puzzle into the rest of the railroad network Absolutely. and be, be able to deliver this in product on a timely manner, on an efficient manner, and in a manner that's going to maximize our ability to deliver the, call it a return on investment, because that's really, in the end of the day, that's really what it is. Absolutely. And I want to thank you very much for this short portion of your time. I respect what you do, and it's, it's the best hobby in the world. I keep saying it. Yeah, thank you very much. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you for the time today.
For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Doug Blaine all the way from beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Bachman Trains. Isn't it wonderful to have you on the show tonight? Doug, how are you? Ken, it's a pleasure to be with you and uh, all your fans. I uh, look forward to talking with you and sharing some of our products from Bachman. That's awesome. Now, I've been working with you for almost 30 years, Doug, and you have and I have both followed each other through the industry and watched it change to where it is now. Very strong, the best hobby in the world. And while I want to talk about start by talking about some of the amazing photography that I was able to do for you. I was so honored at the time. And we're going to cover N scale, G scale, and all the various types of scale in these photographs as I run you through them, including ON30. I want to start with the 440s, Doug. That was an absolutely amazing locomotive. Um, I had talked to Lee Riley about that model for years in that it originally has a drive shaft between the tender and the locomotive and Bachman remade that locomotive completely with a coreless motor and absolutely turned it into a dynamite 440, the best on the HO scale market in my opinion. And I want to show you a beautiful photograph of a sunrise with that. I like to get up early in the morning to do some of these shots. I also did a shot of both of the Jupiter, uh, both of them creating, recreating that effect of when Union Pacific had finished the main line out in the middle of the country. And I also have a single shot here of the Bachman 440 doing a sunrise, whereas I used a body of water to reflect the locomotive. Very, very beautiful photography. I'm not tooting my horn, but it is neat when I'm able to do art like this. I love it. I also did this beautiful locomotive in G scale. We put this on the 2016 cover. Do you remember what that was? In fact, that's on the shelf down here. Just a gorgeous locomotive with red wheels. Um, I'm going to look and see what the name of that was. That's the Grizzly Flats. Oh, yes. Remember that? And you had seen Absolutely. It. That is a beautiful locomotive, and it was a beautiful shot from you as well, Ken. I also did that locomotive with a sunrise and just a little darker type of a photograph, creating a mood that I'm showing to you right here, just a kind of a different scenario. We also did a Bachman GG1 in N scale. There's a lot of avid N scalers out there. And this locomotive was absolutely dynamite and looked just like the one that Williams had done and the one that you guys had done in HO scale. I also wanna say that I did this shot at nighttime, and this is gonna be another N scale photograph where you guys had come out with these beautiful Pennsylvania streamline passenger cars and I painted a moon and I lit up some N scale buildings with um, LED lights on the inside and reflected a background light off of the track and lit up the train so it would reflect off the rails, creating a very interesting mood shot. I love doing shots like that. I also did, I'm gonna show you an array of photographs here that I did with an ON30 locomotive. I think we ran this in the Bachman catalog one time as a centerfold shot. A lot of pine trees in the background, another reflective body of water and the mountains. Guys, this is just, I, this is the kind of stuff I love to do. On the 2020 Bachman catalog cover, we put that beautiful Amtrak locomotive that I've got sitting on the table. Again, I did use some pine trees and mountains. I didn't want to create a Midwest scene, but I probably should have with that one, the way it was set up. This year, we did the Bachman Trains 2021 catalog cover with the new Bachman G scale dash nine. That's eventually going to come out. What a beautiful model. You guys had sent me the Santa Fe and the Santa Fe war bonnet. Absolutely beautiful model. I want to end it up here with the Bachman N scale USAR steam locomotive, USRA steam locomotive that we had done. This was done outdoors. Again, all my photography is done outdoors where I created a scene using code 55 rail on this one. I worked a few Bachman uh, N scale freight cars in the background that were completely weathered. And it's just that type of art that I love creating. And I think that pretty much wraps up all the photos here that I wanted to talk about tonight. We do have one more, and that is the train sets. You guys have come out with an array of train sets. I've done a lot of various train set box art for you, which I do love doing, especially when I get to go to the big box stores and find my photographs sitting on the shelf. And this is just one example of an N scale or an HO scale train set that we had done. So, Doug, I know you've got some exciting stuff that you'd like to talk about, too. Please tell us. Will do. Thanks for sharing those photos with us, Ken, and a reminder of all that great work. <laughs> Much appreciated, believe me, over the years. Um, I would like to start out actually with a follow up to uh, Larry Harrington's last appearance on your show. Yes. And he was showcasing uh, the ALC 42. Yes. And we have a video to share with you showing some of the light sequences and sound sequences. So um, if you don't mind uh, 
giving that a roll. Yes, here we and go. And I can talk talk through some of that right now. Absolutely. All right. So here we go. First thing first is the startup sequence. That's amazing. And then that's absolutely amazing. And then we have uh, separately controlled uh, headlights and ditch lights, and the uh, the flashing ditch lights will activate as soon as the uh, the bell or the horn is activated. That is really cool. That's the magic of TCS. Their decoders are absolutely amazing with all the functions that they have in them. Absolutely. Uh, the next sequence shows the marker lights um, coming on with the when the locomotive is put into reverse. And the same will be seen on the back end of the locomotive uh, when the direction changes. That's a similar effect. Very cool. We also have a station announcement. Your attention, please. Now departing on track one. And last but not least is a high-speed run-by uh, with a great high-speed effect and with the uh, Doppler sound effect as it passes by the viewer. That's amazing. And you can control that on your home layout at home as it's running by. And I'm probably walking over the sound of this, but it's absolutely amazing to hear it go as it comes through. <laughs> I, I don't know why we had TCS do it. You, you did it beautifully. Ken. We just had you do it. We'll get, get a recording for you the next time, for the next locomotive. There's other sound effects with this locomotive as well. Um, there's emergency braking. Uh, there's a, a dead man's alarm. Um, uh, and also in the video, I don't know if you could see it very well. It's a little bit blown out by the lights, but there is an interior engine compartment light. That is right. Just so like lots on the of prototype. great features. And there's more sound effects on there as well. We just couldn't showcase everything. So um, enjoy. Um, these locomotives will be out uh, very late this year. Um, and I see you have, uh, I just wanted to show you this charger here, which I think I, I know um, has been shown before. I know, right? I'm at a special order mine from Lombard Hobbies up in Lombard, Illinois. That's a beautiful model, Doug. I can't wait. But that's the, the day one paint scheme from Amtrak, limited edition. Be sure you get yours on order like Ken has and, um, and make sure you get yours. Absolutely. Now, you've got some other exciting models to show off today, don't you? We do. Um, I have a, a train set to show you. Uh, actually, two. I'm going to start out with a uh, Owen 30 narrow gauge uh, in O scale. And this is the uh, East Broad top set. I'm gonna bring it up. It's gonna be a little awkward here in front of the camera, but so bear with me. I'm gonna have to come off to the side. Right, that's ON30. That's an amazing looking train set, Doug. So yeah, the, the East Broad top, I think a lot of people are familiar with it. Um, it was a narrow gauge railroad that uh, operated in Western Pennsylvania right. from starting in 1872 to take coal from the Broad Top Mountain uh, and distribute it around West, Western Pennsylvania and other states as well. Uh, the mine closed in 1956. So from 1872 to 1956, that's a good long run for an narrow gauge railroad. And, uh, but as soon as it closed in 1956, it opened as a tourist railroad and it operated until 2011. And um, it is being uh, reopened, uh, it clo yeah, it closed in 2011, and it's reopening this year. So tourist operations will begin again. And we wanted to have this set ready to go uh, for, uh, to commemorate the startup of the railroad again. I think we also have a picture of the uh, set, or just a locomotive in one of the cars as it was shown in an ad. And so I'm sure you'll be showing that on the screen as well. But for narrow gauge fans out there, it's a terrific uh, train set. The logos are with a, um, uh, I'm called a stencil dash around the outside, which is the way the East Broad Top is displaying the logos now. And also, of course, some uh, great historic colors and uh, a great addition to any narrow gauge uh, collection. Absolutely. And I just want to say, Doug, that that narrow gauge set, it comes with Bachman Easy Track. But the beauty of that is that's what you get started with. We can bring uh, a, a newbie into the hobby, somebody who 
is just starting out. They get into the narrow gauge, they start studying the history, and you can take that locomotive and those cars and build on it. With all the other products that Bachman's got in that line of ON30, which they essentially created from the ground up. And I've talked about that story, how it started on the podcast at one time. But the fact is, you can advance yourself, build your home layout, build a four by eight, build a diorama, build a module, and continue to grow with that set as you add to it with additional freight cars, different locomotives, and all the various things that you can buy from the Bachman catalog and or your favorite dealer. It's a great scale to work in because it's large, but yet it still runs on HO scale track. So hats off to you guys for coming up with that concept. Thank you. Yeah, great space saver. As you said, you can fit a lot of uh, O-scale railroading in a smaller space with the HO track. And uh, as you said, it's a complete ready-to-run set. Great way to get started or get somebody else started as well. Absolutely right. Now, I've got, that a, as a gift. I've got an N-scale locomotive on the table. It runs on N-scale track, but it's an HO-scale locomotive. And this is one of my favorite new lines that you had come out with just about four years ago. And I think you've got something on that you'd like to talk about today. I do. Can I, can I sneak in one extra set first, Ken? Please do. Okay, this is our uh, uh, Norman Rockwell, again, in the interest of getting people started in uh, the hobby of model railroading, this is a Norman Rockwell, uh, it's our Freedom Train, this is wow. an HO scale set, Nice. Uh, also complete ready to run, and this has terrific graphics on the side, we're going to, uh, you have a photo of this as well, you can flash up on the screen, Okay. but the story behind this set is that Norman Rockwell painted a series of photos uh, called the Four Freedoms. It was uh, freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom of want, and freedom from fear. Wow. And these uh, paintings traveled by rail in the freedom train uh, right after World War II to uh, help with the uh, – it, it also helped uh, – I'm sorry – helped with war bonds uh, during World War II and after uh, to – foster the spirit of patriotism throughout the country uh, that was prevalent after World War II and historic documents, including original copies of the Declaration, original copies of the Constitution, and the, uh, the we had a visitor, That's and, the, awesome. uh, and Norman Rockwell's paintings. So this is a great way um, to share that history and a nice, colorful, patriotic train with someone new to the hobby. Amen. And now that it's Christmas, think about it. All these products that you're seeing would be perfect for that special model railroader in your life for Christmas. I'd like to see that big box wrapped up in paper. How cool would that be? I like the way you think. <laughs> All right, Doug, tell uh, us about these, uh, these smaller locomotives that run on N-scale sure. track that are, in fact, HO scale. Surely. These are, um, this is in our Thomas and Friends line. Yes. And it's, uh, as you said, an HO narrow gauge train runs on end track. It's uh, commonly referred to as 009 um, in uh, more of a British parlance. But our, our latest addition is Peter Sam. Okay. So this is a new locomotive. Uh, this is the first painted sample we have. And I'll show that to you now. Let me get this up here. Very nice. A little go. bit lower oh, down. There you go. Right there. there. There you go. How All about right. that? There's Turn a little bit of a delay here. So, I'm, I'm... And give me a side shot of it. All right. There we go. I'm uh, going to bring it around this way, actually. More, yep. I got to come more, back over No, no. Here. More towards your face. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. And the beauty well, of you these. You know what? I would, I would make the worst dentist in the world. <laughs> Doug, the I wonder. I cannot work backwards. The, wonder, right, the wonderful like thing that. about these locomotives is, yes, they are in the Thomas line, but there's so much more that you can do with these. The scratch builders out there and the modelers out there that want to build an HO scale narrow gauge type of a train set or a layout, you could scratch build your buildings. You could take, obviously, the smiling faces off of the locomotives and scratch build a front or take a front off of a different locomotive and put on it, repaint it. There's so many different things that you can do with this scale, including scratch building your own freight cars. So this is something also that I could see you guys, you know, building into something in the future. I'm going to put up some of our other locomotives we have in this line. Okay. Um, just to show people the variety and I'm um, getting a strange glare on the screen now. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Looks good on but my end. At any, at any rate, um, to go along with these cars, we do have uh, narrow gauge um, slate wagons. 
two pa two styles of passenger cars. We've announced a box van and a brake van. So we do intend for this line to keep growing. And here's some of the locomotives we already have done. These are already on the market. Right. Uh, this is Scarloe. Right. That's what I've got right here in front of us. Oh, that's Scarloe. In fact, okay. I've, yep. I'm probably showing photographs of this one because I shot this one outside with some River Point Station vehicles and some HO scale people, and it just made it look like a scenic tourist railroad. Oh, I love that locomotive. That's All a right, diesel. This, yes. This is. Oh, yeah. Got it. I'm trying to get it out of the glare. I can't do it. It looks good. All right, there, this is called Rusty. Okay. So that's another one. So they, it's a nice family of locomotives. And then this one is Reneus. That's nice. And we have two versions of Reneus uh, in this original color scheme and then in the yellow, yellow color scheme. That is go. very cool. And you can find all of these models in the 2021 uh, Bachman catalog. In fact, I'm thumbing through it briefly to see if I can find them all at the same time. And this catalog is laid out really well. It's broken down by scales, HO scale, G scale, the whole bit all the way through. Um, we also have a uh, catalog you can download via PDF from our website, of course, www.bachmantrains.com. Uh, Com. Uh, don't forget the double N in Bachman, <laughs> and uh, and you'll you can download the the whole catalog and per peruse it that way as well. So I don't have a catalog right here. I'm not sure what page it's on, Ken, but um, they are all, certainly all listed. So along with our all of our Thomas uh, products in HO scale, HO narrow gauge, N scale, and large scale. Absolutely awesome, Doug. Hey, listen, I want to thank you very much for being on the What's Neat show for Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. It's always great to have your input on what's new and what you guys have got. I do want to wish all the viewers out there a very Merry Christmas and you too, Doug, because this show now is appearing just a few days before Christmas. In fact, on the 15th of December is when the show had come out. And I just want to wish you and yours and all the wonderful folks at Bachman a very happy holiday season. Thank you. And same to you, Ken, for uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone, to you and uh, all your viewers and wish everyone the best. I'll tell you what, the year 2022 is going to be a fabulous year. So with that, that's this segment for What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. Authors Trains, supporting hobby retailers across the world since 1932. Check out their website and learn more at Wathers.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. <laughs> Thank you.